Hey guys, Paul Niyama, ProfessionallyStrong.com. I want to help you become the best and strongest version of yourself. So, a couple of days ago was my sixth week doing jujitsu, and actually more than a couple of days, because couple means two, but a few days ago, it was my uh, sixth week doing jujitsu. And what I, if you haven't seen any of these videos before, what I try to do is relate my new person experiences in jujitsu and kind of uh, some thoughts that are going to my head and try to bring it back to a workout setting to help people that are trying to work out and get in shape and get some good results. So what am I thinking about this week? Well, my knee, um, if you followed any of my previous um, journey through jujitsu, I don't know what to call this. Um, if you followed any of the previous ones, um, my knee's still bothering me. It, uh, I've had surgery on it almost, almost a year ago at this point. And ACL redone has a cadaver in there, but I have no meniscus. So uh, I'm beginning to think maybe because there are no meniscus for that padding, just bone on bone, maybe I'm just gonna have to deal with the pain and just kind of keep working through it, which I've been doing. I don't, I don't know if it will ever go away just because that, uh, that important meniscus is not there anymore. But um, other than that, uh, one thing I did wanna talk about this week is trust, something very important in the jujitsu world. Um, I've heard a lot of people say the reason that you could go 100%, go hard, is because of the tap. You know, when you tap, you know, you gotta release the hold, and if you if it's a real, like, jujitsu match, at that point, you've won already. So, um, you could go hard in those chokes, and those arm bars, and all these other um, joint locks and submissions, because, you know that if you get caught in something and you tap, the person's gonna release you. Well, um, the reason I'm bringing this up is last week I saw this video of someone getting caught in a choke, and it was a it was not at a school in the U.S. It was actually a Brazilian school, uh, and it's it kind of scared me because someone got caught in a choke, and the person was tapping, tapping, tapping. The guy did not release it. Someone looked like they came over and was trying to. Um, stop the situation but the person that was choking said no hold off and you know the person went out he went unconscious they woke him up and they kept rolling and putting him in submissions and at that point he was tapping and so it scared me a little because you know i think uh that's that's what goes through a lot of people's heads when they're starting to just say, oh well what if what if i get in there with some crazy person and they don't release the hold and I, they end up knocking me out, knocking me unconscious or breaking one of my um, joints or something like that. That's a fear that goes through a lot of people's heads. And I think as far as working out, a lot of people will imagine the worst case scenario as well. So what I did, I talked to my professor about this and he said, he, he saw that video as well. And what it looked like from his perspective is that it was kind of part of their training curriculum because um, when the person did go unconscious, the guy, kind of released the hold right there um, to not cause further damage because, um, don't quote me on this, but from the way I understand it, if you go unconscious um, and you, it's released right there, um, it's supposed to be safe. But like I said, I, I haven't done too much research in this, but if you keep holding it, that's when you can potentially kill somebody. So it, it did scare me at that point. So I, I talked to him about this and said, uh, what it looked like from his perspective is part of their training. They're, they're looking to make the person unconscious and try to uh, release the holds. I mean, to try to do some holds on that person and continue. And I guess that's another thought is if you ever go unconscious in a fight, you wake up fighting. Um, and it's just a guess at that point because what happened um, when they when they when the person came back too and they started rolling again they were getting him in chokes and other stuff and as soon as he tapped they were releasing him so uh, it may be what they were doing maybe not but it led me back to this discussion of trust and having that and does this really apply in the weight room towards your workouts and. I say to some extent it does. Maybe not the extent that if you do something totally wrong, you're gonna die. Obviously, it's possible. Um, I, I've seen people get very, very injured, and I'm sure some people have um, not done well in the weight room um, because of a lack of knowledge or not doing things right. But 
who who are you trusting at this point? Now, if you're working out on your own, uh, it, it's kind of on you. But if you're if you're working out with a training partner or especially a trainer who should be knowledgeable, um, if you're paying somebody money to train you, that person should have the knowledge. Now, when I was training people, the number one thing that always crossed my mind was safety. It was not with their unfort- It was not the results because I would always put it this way: if someone got the results that they wanted, they looked good, felt good, got real strong, but then they got hurt. What good is that? So safety was always important. Now, there, you know, when you first start working out, you're gonna get a little sore. Um, and that, that's kind of something you just gotta deal with. But as far as injury, where you're debilitated for a long time, um, not good. I don't, I wanna avoid that as much as possible. Um, and I don't wanna even avoid my clients having a lot of soreness in the beginning because if that happens, um, you know, I, I try to think if that happened to myself. If I wanna work out and I go to a gym and I get so sore that I cannot move for a week, it might not be an injury, but that's still not a good thing. It takes a pretty, um, a, it takes a person with a lot of mental toughness to come back from that and to keep pushing themselves. And if you if you are going that hard in the beginning that you can't work out for a week or so, uh, it's probably a little too hard. So uh, as far as a beginner, you're putting a lot of trust um, in your workout partner or where you're getting that advice from. I mean, maybe, maybe you're starting up again and you've done these kind of workouts in the past when you were younger in very good shape, but years of a sedentary lifestyle has made it tough for you to get back in the gym. So you feel all the soreness and say, I used to do that. It was so easy. And then I come back and I feel all the soreness. So, um, as far as the trust, you need to uh, have a trainer or workout partner that does have some knowledge, especially if you have very little knowledge yourself uh, and you want to get good advice. Now, how do you know that you're getting good advice? It's kind of a tough question because when I talk to someone, I could tell if that person is full of it or they know what they're talking about. But as far as someone very brand new, what do you look for? Well, um, if it was me, I would think the number one thing I want to look for is someone that values safety above anything else. Obviously, you want results. You're not working out for nothing. But like I said, if you get hurt, what good is that? So safety should be number one in any workout. But there's also a dichotomy that you need to balance that with pushing yourself because if you're just concerned about safety and never ever push yourself, you're never challenging your body and you're never gonna get better. So you do need to have that safety with that push, with that um, little bit extra to push your body. And then, especially in the beginning, not, not as much as you've been doing it for a while, but especially in the beginning, you don't wanna push so much that uh, you're out for a week. Not not because of injury, just because it's sore. So. Um, you need to find that balance. And when I'm uh, working out on my own um, or uh, working out specific exercise, especially the bench press, uh, most everything else, uh, if I can't complete a lift, it's not that dangerous. But a bench press uh, with that bar across your chest, if you can't get that up, you really need someone to uh, watch you with that. But um, so so what do you look for? Again, I'm getting distracted. All right. Um, Safety, but also technique. If you, if someone that you're working out is, is very f- strict on your technique, oh, your elbows are coming down or your right, your shoulders are rising. Um, that is also a good sign because I think technique is super important in lifting. If you use the wrong technique, uh, you could get injured and, and that leads back to safety. So, uh, those two are in conjunction. And after that point, once you're doing the exercise correctly, once you know how to do things without hurting yourself, at that point is when you push yourself. So um, even though people work out for results, I would say out of those three, safety, technique, and then results, I say the results are last, unfortunately. I know that's not what a lot of want to, what a lot of people want to hear, but um, you need to be safe. So that's what to look for. Those are my thoughts on jujitsu, and hopefully this helps you with your workout. Hopefully it helps to motivate you, and uh, hopefully it helps you to train smarter. Um, and harder too. <laughs> you don't want to do just smart without hard. You want you want both. You want to train hard and smart as well. So that's it, guys. I hope this video helps you. If you did, uh, please subscribe to the channel because I try to. I'm gonna be doing this on a weekly basis as I go 
through jujitsu. I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, as far as me making this video, I, I do plan to keep going with jujitsu for a long, long time. Um, and I hope I don't get hurt, so I have to take any breaks and it extends my learning period. But um, subscribe to the channel, guys. A lot more stuff coming. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram, very good. I'm always on there, and uh, I try to post stuff every day. Sometimes I have a little uh, uh, writer's block of what to do. I, and it's not uh, always writing, but I guess uh, creator's block of what exactly to do. But I try to be on there at least every day and post stuff for you guys to motivate you and inspire you. So I will see you guys next time where I will try to help you become the best, strongest version of yourself.